good. Okay, so yeah, what's up? Just woke up from a nap <laughs> and everything. Yep. And, and you're groggy, so what's good with Melee? Oh, man. Yeah, good question on that. Um, I feel like it's like... <laughs> I feel like every week it's it's like the pendulum swings between like, wow i feel like i understand something and then it's like existential crisis like i just i don't know anything mm-hmm. so i think i'm in the i don't know anything right now phase um i think that's good yeah that's reassuring that you think it's good it's, it's definitely frustrating on this end but um yeah i guess hmm yeah, I think kind of what we were talking about before, which is just like, I'm trying to think of what this stemmed from. Uh, that's what it was. It was like Puff approaching Nair, or just like anything kind of in that realm. Obviously, I'm not looking for like an answer for every move, but mm-hmm. I think even like even the starting point of whatever that looks like, I think is important just because there are moves that just beat other moves um i don't even know i guess how to begin to approach that i guess in the message was i don't know do you, do you remember the message string that we had i think it was on. i mean i remember you asking me yeah, yeah it was a screenshot oh yeah and i, it was like, I feel like a, like I, I spin a big move wheel and i'm like oh i guess i'm just gonna do that mm-hmm. um so yeah, I don't know if you have any insight or thoughts on that. Yeah, I can share my screen real quick and kind of show you the thought process, I guess, of how I would answer these kind of questions and how I would like think about them myself and do all these things. Um, let's see, I have a save state for something. Yeah, yeah, this is perfect. So this is like, just like Fox and Air, right? Mm-hmm. And I have my answer. I'm like, okay, yeah, I want to grab it, right? Um, the thing with this is when you have your answer, there's a few things you want to check and do. And one is you want to check how that answers interact interacts with their mix-ups, like them drifting back, them doing it late in there, them doing an empty land, things like that. And the reason you want to do that is because you want to have multiple answers for for these things. Um, because, like, let's say my answer is to dash ants grab it. If uh, this person does, like, wave dash down, right, or wave dash back, then I'm going to be in lag and they might grab me. Or if they, like, overshoot grab right then it's gonna beat my grab so it's like you know i kind of i might have to look at a few different ways of how i want to deal with uh i can't jc grab but i might want to look at some different ways like okay maybe sometimes i drill maybe sometimes i full hop maybe i meet them in the middle before they even get there you know and i you know you test all these options it's like i might i might want to shield this and like power shield it. Wait, shine out the shield. But if he ever grabs me, like this isn't gonna interact well. Is he ever gonna grab me? Oh, it's <laughs> I see. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see what I mean by like I do. having different answers. So I might have a different answer, like like this full hop. You know, it deals with both kinda. This isn't like the answer, but it is something that kind of leaves me flexible to deal with other options without getting like the biggest reward sometimes. Right? Like I have up smash too. You have all these things. Like that's why I, I didn't know how to answer your question because it is so like limitless. So I think I agree with what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like I am looking for the most simple answer to everything. And then yeah. I can kind of figure out how to iterate on top of that. Yeah. I feel uh, like you, the reason why you kind of keep having this crisis or whatever, where you feel like you understand things and you feel like you don't, it's, it feels to me it's like because you keep looking for like the answer rather than like uh, just playing, you know, it's, it's, trusting it's your hard. instinct. 
that's just I think that's something that maybe that surprises me is would be that like there isn't an answer. Well, like if there was an answer then the game would look Yeah. Different. Which we've had this conversation before yeah. multiple times for sure. But I don't know. That I think that part surprises me the most. I think it surprises you just because you haven't like fully accepted it. I think I, I feel like I try to accept it, but then it just like come back and be like, well, surely there's something that I'm doing wrong. Um, what if there's something that your opponent's doing right? Well, right. <laughs> I, I mean, I try to put it into my hands, right? Like I'm yeah, doing yeah. something incorrectly. But it's between um, two two humans, like yeah, yeah, totally. There are limitations. And you are struggling against top tiers, and they are top tiers for a reason. Right. They they can mix you. So, would you recommend when I do something, when I do experience something like this, just at least that first step is just recognition, just like okay, can I even identify what I lost to? Yeah. And then once I do that, is it even I think fine to like break down the scenario? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I think that? if you can approach it with that mindset, it's definitely fine to break down the scenarios, like like what I'm doing here. And the other thing with this is like, um, I, when I test these things, I also test them from, um, oh, there's a double audio. Can you still hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I also test these things. This one's really important is I test these things from different, uh, frame advantage because yeah. the other thing with the picture you sent me is like, you were like kind of mid jump, mid wave dash. Right. or something so it's like i'm very rarely going to be like feet planted ready to like dash and grab this so exactly. i need to test this from like how do i deal with this if i'm like dashing back right you know how do i deal with this if i'm dashing forward if i already dash back first like if i just whiffed a jab and i have some frame lag or whatever i whiffed the shine and i'm way dashing back so like that's why i'm saying it's like there's a million answers, but the context matters first. Like, where are you? What action are you in? What's available to you? And like, stuff like that is, I feel like you will be searching for those answers until the end of time because yeah. the situations are just endless. You might have massive frame advantage here. You might be spaced here. You might be dashing back here right so it's like you can't like have the answer every time like there is no the answer there's just an answer yeah. and, and I mean, uh yeah, i get that yeah yeah so you like but I'm, uh, that's the hard part is like i feel like i'm looking for something that uh, yeah, yeah. It, it makes sense it, like i understand that it makes sense but it's like it's hard to get past it because yeah. that's probably the only way that it really approach it so. yeah it's the only way you play it. you have to unlearn it i feel like you have to unlearn like these things before you learn something new mm -hmm. and really convince yourself and explain to yourself why your previous understanding is not what you want anymore um so going into like a match Mm -hmm. If we were to do, like, if I were to do something like this, like, completely not looking for, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain it, like, not look for an answer for each scenario, yep. could you walk away from a situation and give it, I don't know, like, kind of, like a, I don't know, like a 60%, like, that was pretty good, like, for whatever, like, for whatever they did, like, okay, that, what I did in that scenario was good for the most part, like, maybe it wasn't the best option, but given um, all the knowledge I had at the time, like, that was pretty good. In, in analysis, yes, and in focus practice, yes, but never when I'm, like, playing. Because, okay. like, I've said it before, but it's, like, it's a fight. I don't have time to think about, like, whether what I did was good or bad or anything like that. The next situation is going to happen immediately. Mm -hmm. I might get outplayed. They might clip me. And I'm, I don't know what they're going to do. Are they going to shine me to the ledge? Am I ready to ledge dash? Are they going to up throw me? Am I ready to tech? Like, I can't. I, You do not have time to think about uh, if what you did was like good or not. But I mean, yes, when you like go back 
and do your analysis, that is the time to do those things. Okay. Yeah. So mid match, it's not really something to think about. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm worried that that's something I'm I'm getting too bogged down with. Yeah. Like I I'm, I think just because it's so way. comforting to think and analyze that that's why we do it. Mm-hmm. But it like it's, again speaking from experience, it slows you down, takes you out of the moment. And it's like I do not want to bring my analytical brain to a uh, competition. That is, that's like a completely out of melee thing for me too, is like just overthinking is so hard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny, like, yeah, you come from Yu Gi Oh background where you have time to think and yep. plan out all these things. And there are similarities between Yu Gi Oh and melee, but like, this is where it's dra- drastically different is like the time. Like, you don't have time to do this in melee. It would be such a different game if you had time to do that. Right. Yeah. It'd be a lot slower. It'd be a lot slower. Chess melee. Yeah. And I don't know. Like, it's it's just a skill that you have to grind out, like spontaneity. The game, like, tests you in spontaneity in a lot of ways. Like, every 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 single game I play versus someone, something new happens every single time. Like, it's impossible for me to, like, know the answer to everything. But the good thing is, it's also impossible for my opponent to know the answer to everything. That is true. So it's like, (laughs) I don't need the perfect answer because they don't have the perfect answer. But if I take too much time to think about an answer, it's going to lose to their whatever answer. You know what I mean? Right. So, okay, so a follow-up to that is, like, how... Obviously, we, we want to be as intentional as possible when we're playing. Mm-hmm. But are you thinking about that in-game? What? Like, that level of, like, granularity in each game. You're like, okay, well, they did this and that um, this last time. And it's like, I know it's a fight, right? And it's, like, trying to be... Like, every situation is different. But, like, are you, are you considering... Um, like what they just did and yeah adding it to I, oh god like yeah i think I, i've been trying to explain this to my students but like i think a big reason why people kind of get stuck is because they actually know too much about melee and think too much about it and i always related to like if we were just if me and you were like 12 years old and we just picked mm-hmm. up this game and we don't know what Fox is or what Falco is or what a wave shine is or anything like that. But we were presented with these options. We'd figure out good answers. Just like, oh, the Fox is jumping at me. Gonna move out the way. Oh, the Puff is falling on me with Nair. I'm gonna move out the way. I'm an anti-air. Or something. I don't even know what an up tilt is, but I'm gonna, this move looks like it beats that. It interacts with that, right? But... I feel like if you've played for a long time and you know all these things and you've heard people talk about the game, you have all these beliefs about the game, it's just, I feel like you lose the simplicity of it. And it goes into like an overanalyzing thing. And it treats Melee as if it's this super special thing when in reality it's just a game. Like, it's just a fighting game. Your opponent's picking options. So are you. Like, it's... Yeah, I definitely I can relate to that. Yeah. I definitely can. I guess it's just it's hard to think of it in the moment, right? Like being prepared for an option, like given positioning or spacing and knowing what options they have available and mm-hmm. then trying to come up with an answer. Well, you can't always be prepared for everything. Yeah, but the issue is like what if like there are times where I, I feel like I don't know any like answer, which is obviously wrong, right? Like I'll just keep telling myself like for example, Let's say we're, I don't know, like a platform length away. Uh, Fox versus Falco. I'm Fox. My brain is like, okay, these are the options Falco has, Mm -hmm. right? And then I'm mentally telling myself, okay, I want them to dare towards me. Or I want them to field. And then I play the scenario out, like, mentally, and then just go fight. 
and then just go run towards them. And when it doesn't happen, because I've more or less chosen a random option, uh, you know, I get hit for it or whatever. And then sometimes I get lucky, sometimes I don't. Mm-hmm. It can go either way. Uh, I feel like you do know the answers. You're probably just afraid of being wrong. I think you've played this game long enough to where if I... The situation you just described, you, you saying you like you want Falco to dare at you, like, right. you can think of something. His name... I mean, I know I, know I could, Shield? but then... Yeah, right. Full Hawk? Yep. Dash back? Those are just three. Up tilt. <laughs> With Funish. Like, you have answers. I think you just want the right answer. Yeah, and, definitely. Yeah. I definitely do. And that's 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 the hard part is because I feel like the right answer is is what I see, but it's kind of like a weird confirmation bias where you only see the things that do or don't work, like in the top level of play. Yeah. I think you're treating uh, it too much like this is a knowledge test. It feels only. like it. There is knowledge involved in it, of course, but it is you are not solely being t- tested on your knowledge. You're being tested on your spontaneity, your execution, your knowledge, your awareness. I think knowledge and awareness are two kind of different things. And like, there's nothing wrong with like being wrong, other than like your emotion attached to it. Mm-hmm. So- I guess the question is like, how do I, how do I begin to unlearn that? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> right. So <laughs> that goes way beyond melee. That's like a therapy question. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, I can, I can figure that out. Yeah, that takes a lot of self-reflection because you kind of have to go back and figure out where you learned this from in the first place. Of like looking for the answer yeah like where that innate trait comes from does it come from a belief you were lied like or a belief you were kind of told about the game or does it come from like a more personal thing like wanting to find comfort and afraid of being like vulnerable or something like that like it could be a number of things that i can't know myself like i know where mine come from um, mine does did come from uh, wanting to solve things and know the answers so I never had to be vulnerable Yeah, and that had nothing to do with melee <laughs> that had to do with how I was living my life but um, you know it's different for everyone so like I can't give you like the exact framework to break yeah. that but you can definitely like figure it out yeah i think that's enough to to mm-hmm. go on yeah okay man yeah okay i mean it's hard it, it's a lot of work like it's a lot of work it's unlearning something i think is more difficult than learning something because i think it, with me for sure i spent most of my career just learning things like just learning things practice, practice, learn something new, practice, learn this, learn that. But like I never, up until recently, I didn't take a lot of time to unlearn things. It feels like that's the hardest part because learning is easy. It's the like the information that's presented to you, right? And you can just be a sponge and take mm-hmm. it all in. But the unlearning stuff is you gotta, a lot of self-reflection and yeah. considering what, what is, you know, maybe not the best or yep. how do you even recognize if it's good or bad? That's what's hard. Yep. I mean, even yeah. just uh, today, I I just finished playing uh, Ferocity, mm-hmm. and I was like, I was winning every game, and we played one more, and I started getting nervous, and everything, and I made like some pretty key mistakes, and went back and watched those mistakes, and I was just like, why am I? <laughs> I have to unlearn this. Like, I can show you an example, like sure. right now. Of... I- just played Ferocity last week. <laughs> oh, rest in peace. This is going to take some time. <laughs> nah, it'll be fine. You got to move over some of those VODs. 
I hate to just delete a lot of them. Yeah. But I'm lazy. I feel like I'm a data hoarder. I'm like I never want to give up my slip like my slippies. Yeah. Like you know. What if I want to no go back? I look, well, no chance I'm gonna look at them. But like I, I just, have four. But good. I probably should delete them. And now this is okay. This this looks yeah, this will be quick. Be, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I can just skip to sure. a part where like I acted off of like emotions or like a pre preconceived notion or something like that. And it's when I have like a pretty big lead and I have everything I could possibly want. Yeah, it's right here. So I got everything. I got peach on the ledge. I got peach cornered. Right. This is. I got a roll. Uh, yeah, got a rolling. Got my shield pressure. Yeah, I got a rolling. Got her in the corner. And I'm like, man, this is great. And I threw it all away, and I was like, oh no, that's like, that's that's like, this has nothing to do with melee. This is not like, I'm hard reading the specific option. This is just like my up smash kills. I think she's gonna jump. I'm gonna do it. And completely ignoring the context of like, wait, I have a lead, I'm in center, she has her back turned, like, this is great for me. But it's me wanting this to like kind of be over and me kind of chasing that security of just like, if this hits, then I'll be up three to, three to one and then it's like easy from there. And it's just like, I just played a mix up that I had no business playing. She's at the very edge. And I'm here. And it's like, if I were to copy and paste the situation, four stocks a piece, even the same percent, I probably don't do this. Like, I don't need to take that risk, right? But this is like a, it's just an up smash based off of like emotion. And I had to think about it. Just like, why, where was this taught to me? Like, that if the up smash is available, that I have to take it. Like, mm -hmm. why am I not using my time wisely, you know? And there are situations in, in Melee that are more similar to Yu-Gi-Oh! where you do have time. And this is one of them where it's like, I'm perfectly outside of her threat range. Her dash attack can't hit me. She can't shield forever. She can't crouch forever. Like, she, she's on the timer here. And I should be using that. And it's like, okay somewhere throughout my career this was taught to me that uh, I had to make my move right now which I just don't yeah and it's kind of like that uncomfortable position where you're just like oh, I gotta move yeah and it's uncomfortable because it's like the way it feels like is if I wait then I could get hit but somewhere in my head it's like if I wait I could get hit but if I do this up smash I could kill her and it's like yes. I, I take I take the other side where I'm like, oh yeah, I want to kill her. But it's like, they could avoid the up smash anyway. And like, yes, they could hit me if I wait. That's a part of the game. That is just the game. This is like me rejecting what the game is and trying to do my own thing, just my one player thing of just, just trying to kill Peach with my broken up smash or whatever. And it's like, man, it's not even it's not even like I'm right here where it just actually catches her jump. This only catches like a short hop back or a dash forward. Or like it beats and clanks like something. the dash attack or something. And it's like, yeah, if that's like my worry, then like, dude, like let her dash forward. Let her jump with her back turn. You don't have to worry about forward air. Like, you're outside of dash attack range. Like what more could you possibly want? Yeah, I thought about this a lot, and I was just like, man, that needs to be unlearned. The, like, that needs to stop. This has nothing to do with the option I chose. It had to do with my thought process. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Yeah, Th this, this makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I think it would be hard at the current level that I'm at to even think about the situation as, like, I'm trying to think of uh, almost as spiritually as you're thinking about it. Hmm. Uh, but I, I definitely know what and understand what you're talking about. Okay. 
I'm trying to think about that more. Like, I'm I'm definitely I've learned to be better. Like when I'm when I'm done with a set, I can I can remember key spots like this. Mm -hmm. uh, but which I, you know it's an improvement for me at least. I uh, but it's I'll see if I can reflect next time I play if yeah. I do something like that. Something I've been telling my students a lot more recently is to if you have time or if you can make time to watch your VODs after you lose yeah. even if it's just one um, because a big thing is you get to remember the emotion you felt mm -hmm. and in the long run that will save you a lot of time because like if you wait like a week or two to watch a VOD and you make a mistake you won't be able to tell the thought process that led to the mistake right, like you won't be able to tell if it was like a technical mistake or what and just, like because this happens all the time with students where i'm just like why did you do this what like what was wrong here and they're just like i don't remember and i'm just like oh well like if you watched it right after you would know you'd remember the feeling yeah but if you let too much time pass then like you lose that part of vod analysis which is very i think it's valuable there's still other parts that like you will keep regardless of how long you wait but I don't know. It's just Slippy's broken. <laughs> like the fact that you could just like kind of train tournament practice in a way where it's just like you you place like fake pressure on yourself and try and treat it as if it's tournament. Maybe you put something on the line or whatever, but you're trying to recreate those emotions you're able to just like go back and watch yourself mm -hmm. through like an objective lens immediately is like that's insane that's just we didn't have that back in the day <laughs> yeah i think that might be that might be something that i can do uh just like as practice like i've been trying to set like goals like every time that i play but i feel like there's not enough on the line for me to take it seriously enough i guess i don't know yeah something i did which I, I need to do more i did this the week leading up to big house mm -hmm. where i would play ranked sets and i would put something on the line that i really wanted so like a few examples like one night i was a uh, i was really hungry and so i had the option to either make food at home or like go get Popeyes and I wanted Popeyes obviously <laughs> sure, right of course. So that sounds much better than making something at home that I'm like too lazy to really make mm -hmm. and I was like alright I'm gonna go get Popeyes and I was like wait this is a perfect opportunity I'm gonna boot up ranked on no warm up and if I win I will go get Popeyes and if I lose I have I have to eat at home like I just have to and I run into B bats immediately <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, and I'm Falco game one because I start, I queue Falco, and it's just like, this is real. I can't like back out of this, yep. and I have to commit to this because this is like a promise I made with myself. <laughs> so it's like, I try really hard, I lose a Falco, and then I win two in a row with Fox, and I like pop off, <laughs> and you know, I'm just like, damn, that was a, uh, that felt, it's very similar to tournament. It, it's not the exact same, but like. I experienced similar emotions and I got good practice by doing that and it's like I would do this throughout the day if I wanted to do something like if I wanted to go get like a snack at night I'm like alright put a go play a rank set and see if you can get it and it's like I just kept putting that pressure on myself for that whole week and I lost a lot it sucked I I lost a lot I got nervous my heart was pounding all the time but you know it got me ready they did get me ready for a big house and everything. And I learned to have fun with it. Yeah, the more I did it, I learned to like... think about it a little bit more. Yeah. It, it's pretty broken. I, like I said, I'm, I want to do it more. I, I need to, but it is very uncomfortable. It is like scary because it's like you are putting something on the line and that is as close to tournament as you can get is putting something on the line. And during COVID, I would do like pull-ups or push-ups if I lost. So maybe... The one thing I realized is it... It had to be important to you. 
Yeah. Because, like, I, I, I do push-ups and stuff in solo practice when I miss things. Like, if I can't do something in a row, then I'll do push-ups and everything. But when it comes to, like, fighting another human, it wasn't enough for me to be like, if I lose this, I'll do 30 push-ups. Because it's just like, I can, I'll do that anyway. Right. I can do that anyway. It's like, whatever was important to me, it would come in my head. And once it came in my head, it's like, I can't ignore it. That's what I got to put on the line. Like, I, I can't lie to myself. Like, it's impossible. I know what's important. I know what I want. And I'm going to put it up. Uh, it's making me sick just thinking about it. It was... Yeah. Man, it was fun, but oh my god, that was so stressful. And I have I'm, to think about that. I, I think, like, my next tournament is Gommel. So leading up to Gommel, like, the two weeks before that, that's probably going to be the practice. The only practice I'm doing. Okay. Is that... Just stream, time to stream snipe you or something figure it out be like what am i taking from him yeah i was streaming ranked a lot of times when i did it were you telling your chat what was on the line i wasn't telling my chat but it's just like i was streaming ranked to be vulnerable because like the rank can be embarrassing just because there's so many like top players secondaries there's like people clipping you and all these things there's the low tiers and donkey kong and everything so i was just like damn i don't want to do that on stream and it's just like damn I guess I should do it on stream if I don't want to do it. Like, the whole point is to get familiar and get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because, like, if they tell me to go play Junebug for top eight at Big House, I can't request to play off stream in the corner where no one no, can watch us. It's like, I, I have to go up there. So, you know, I'd rather get the practice that's available outside of the tournament rather than get the practice in the moment at the turn of it. Yeah. I'll need to think more about that one and like yeah. what I can do. Yeah, because yeah. I think that's that's a that's a good way to approach it. I'll just need to think of what what would work for me in that spot. Yeah, of course. It's unique to everyone. So mm -hmm. hmm. I'm trying to think of what else has been going on. Definitely still struggling with lasers. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you were mentioning that. It's it's tough. It's it's tough for me. I think there's nothing more in the game that feels unlike like something I'm unfamiliar with than dealing with you know, get like either laser camped or um a less interactive gameplay. Like I think that's that's something that I'm like nothing makes me want to interact more than that gameplay and because of that i think i put myself in worse spots than i would even if someone was like playing yeah i think Just slightly more interactive that might be less of a mental thing and more of like a lack of understanding of how lasers work and what you're just just how lasers work pretty much okay um, a lot of Fox players just kind of don't get it. I, I, I definitely tell you I do not get it. <laughs> yeah, I always tell I always tell them like you should just play Falco a little bit. Like, it, it's like we have the tool of playing the other character. Yeah. And testing it, even if it's just for a game, like we have, there, there's nothing stopping us from like using that tool of reverse engineering things. And I guess just my seeing question how it is, feels from the other side. Like, even if I do play as another character, mm -hmm. uh, I guess that's the tricky part, is, like, I feel like I don't know... Um, you don't. What do you mean? I don't. I'm saying, like, you don't know. Because you yeah, haven't well, played the character. Well, okay. A little bit. Every now and then I'll mess around with other characters, but I guess I don't know what I'm looking for. I know. Because <laughs> um, you've never done it. <laughs> Yeah, okay. That, that's how you learn something new. <laughs> like, I'm, a, I'm aware you don't know what you're doing and that you don't know. Like, do you need to know to learn something? I, I don't know. Good question. You tell me. No, you tell me. Like, if you think about this outside of this stupid game, like, mm -hmm. you're like, a, are you a programmer? No. Oh, okay. I thought you were, that's your brother. No, Michael. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, like, I don't know. Even Yu-Gi-Oh! 
like it you just like if you just picked up Yu-Gi-Oh when you were a kid were you like oh I don't really know how to duel no, I mean, so I'm not uh, gonna duel <laughs> I get I get where you're I get where you're coming from it and I definitely know that I'm slipping into the like I have to be perfect yeah like, understanding what I'm gonna approach before even doing it yeah which is I recognize that's a problem yeah. uh uh yeah I guess to just play the character, I guess I guess go to just start and then it'll. I mean, you can play the character, but you can also like just kind of lab it a bit. I mean, I can also like well, you can use me as a resource. I can teach you about lasers. Mm -hmm. We can talk a little bit about it. I'm not sure exactly where you want to start with it. Um, I guess like. Well, I guess I can figure out some places to start. Yeah, please. Like, there's a few things that I kind of look for when I'm playing this from Fox's point of view and from Falco's point of view. So, like, one big thing is do I have time to jump over the laser before it comes? That's a big so, one. Take taking a step back, even from that, are you telling yourself when you see and, like, have, like, the game sense of when you think they're going to laser, do you tell yourself that? No, this is something that I've learned through practice. Like, even right now, I'm, I'm learning the range. I'm learning the timing of when I can jump over a, right, a lower laser. Do you tell yourself, like, Falco's going to short hop laser? No, I just expect it. Okay, so you expect that Falco's going to short hop laser. And yeah. then... And if he the doesn't... Okay. And That's if he doesn't, right. then it's like, my expectations were wrong. And he, like, semi-outplayed me. But I need to change, you know? Yeah. It's not like I have to fool us in this Nair drill... Or, I mean, this yeah. full hop drill, if I don't see the laser. Like, if you were to, like, dash dance, like, this is a easy with Punisher Falco, but, like, I don't have to get hit by that. Right? But if I see that laser, you know, I might. But, this isn't how I would want to deal with uh, Falco dash dancing, it's the full hop. Because I think this kind of puts me on the back foot. This is like a small outplay from Falco being able to dash dance and like wait out my full hop timing and all these things. Totally. And now if I thought he was going to like dash dance, then I might do something like this. But that means I'm going to get hit by this laser. And you know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. If I think he's going to do this laser, I might do something like this, right? So it's getting like comfortable with all these uncomfortable mix-ups because they like they do feel bad when you're wrong like when i do this running power shield versus falco and he does something freaky like this and i'm like shit <laughs> like yeah you got me or he like does something like he runs at me and shines he just run up grabs me he does like a late laser and now my power shield timing is all like messed up But like, I don't know. It, again, that goes back to like the full hop being a pretty good way to deal with like a laser if you're reading a certain type of laser. But I, th there's just there's so much about lasers. It, it's it's difficult. Cause now there's like laser heights. Um, like can you jump over like a high laser? knowing the range you can jump over that because like this no longer jumps over high laser like a full hop this way or like a dash a delayed like full hop doesn't jump over high laser right but you can't run under it you know so it's like noticing what type of laser they're doing noticing what type of laser you think they're gonna do and having like solid game plans for what you think is going to happen but i don't think you can just like perfectly kind of react and then like come up with a plan i think you kind of have to have some sort of like starter i talk about starters with edge guarding a lot but it's the same like concept here where like my starter might be running forward on a read on a high laser but if he were to uh if he were to like dash dance 
or something, then maybe I don't like click that shine. Or maybe I click it later. Like you see how I'm like delaying my my shine until I actually get there. Yeah. But if he does like that high laser in place, I'm gonna click my shine earlier, right? But I can also like mix it up if I don't see it. I can like shield. It's just I'm not fully committed to the actual option I'm gonna click, but I am committed to running forward because that's my starter, assuming I think he is going to either high laser or something. It, it depends on what your read is. I don't want to give you too many like definite. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you definitely know where I'm gonna go with it. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, and I think that's the intimidating part is like even being able to identify like what a starter is and then when to i guess decide and it's like those can go back to reaction points and it's like okay where are they are you in frame advantage like mm -hmm. can i do this or that i think that's a little bit of the element that i was missing uh, because it really it starts with a read even before all this like, yep. that's, uh, yeah yeah and, and, and that's i think right and that's that's kind of where i'm missing like something huge uh, because my brain is just like, okay, you're going to not even start with a read. You're going to just know that he's going to do this or that. And so you're going to choose this option a full two seconds yeah. before they do it. Uh, it feels like right. the way you view, like, the options you choose are very set in stone and black and white rather yeah. than, like, nuanced and flexible. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the hard part for me is deciding when it becomes flexible. Like, the stuff that's inflexible, that's static, is, maybe, let's just say combo game, right? Like, obviously, sure. I know it's not, everything's different, but when I hit someone, they're going to get comboed similarly to, you know, an O2-er versus and just anyone. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but the part leading up to that is the really tricky part that I don't, I guess I don't know when. Okay, I'm going to need to think more about reaction points. Do you, do you have, like... I guess it would be different. Every situation is a little different for it. I was going to say, do you have, like, a set list in your head, more or less? No. <laughs> of, okay, yeah, we're right. But, like, there are certain things that... Reaction points are... The way I describe it, or the way I think about it, is, like, it's just the lens you view the game under. It's not something that you actively try and execute or anything. It is how you view the game and think about the game. You can still do all the things that you know how to do, but you should view it under that lens. Like, for example, if, uh, what's a good option? Yeah, so like this one, for example. If, um, yeah, if your read is, let's just do two of these. This is fine. So, like, let's say my read is um, that he's going to dash back and maybe jump or something. Then, like, my reaction point is my dash forward. But so many players will, like, Fox players will, like, skip their reaction point and just do this up smash regardless. And it's just like, That's you just gave me a free down there. But it's like, they can't tell they're doing anything wrong because when this up smash hits, they're just like, nice read. But when it, yeah. this, it's just like, oh, man. But it's like, you can react, you can confirm that he's, like, in that area, at least. You can check and see if he jumped first and, like, put your shield up or change your mind, you know. And it's scary because, like, you have to, like, look at him and pay attention. You can't just, like, close your eyes and pick your option and just be like, oh, I was wrong. <laughs> right? So breaking that scenario down, um, because I want to try to frame this in a lot of other scenarios. Mm -hmm. like I want to be able to like look at a match and seeing if I can identify something similar. Like where do I obviously do something wrong here, or you know, commit mm -hmm. way too early. Um, so it starts with like a read, um, which is you're gonna say is Falcon gonna short hop or full hop, and then sure. your starter is to just dash to where they are. And then either you're on top of them and you can make a decision. Yep. Or they're at a distance where you need to reassess. Yep. Okay. 
So if I could, if I literally, if I broke it down into three parts, it would be something like that. Yeah, I think like once you really get it, it is very simple. Like a lot of these situations will become like pretty like baby simple. Like it's just like, oh, he's not there anymore. I don't need to like commit to this. I need to play the next situation. And now it's like, oh, is he going to land on me with a down air aerial or a late laser wave land? Like, you can't know. But you still need to pick an option. You need to pick an answer. Your answer might be wrong, it might be right. But you don't know. That's the exciting part. That's, like, where a lot of outplaying occurs. Is when both people don't know what's going to happen. That part's fun. I don't know. Maybe you need to maybe look for the fun and beauty in that more and I think you would naturally kind of look for those situations more often or view the the game under that lens more as if you found like the fun in that part I do like that part but it's I think I've gotten away from it to the point of like yeah you just want to like you want to do things that work yeah yeah Yeah. right like I'm finding the joy in the wrong side of it like like the hitting them like obviously it's fun to hit them or just like rather than have it lead up to what is yeah like both of us thinking about it and like okay well i outplayed them in this spot and like there is a balance to be had like a lot of the things that you currently do are really good but yeah you have to find a balance between both um intuition and logic because if you go too far on like one side intuition like i use mango as an example i think he's very far on the intuition side Mm -hmm. and therefore he loses out on a lot of things like understanding specific scenarios or checking a reaction point or something like that and if you go too far on the uh logic side then like you know sometimes you end up like me a few months ago where it's just like I'm not trusting my intuition, I'm just trusting my logic, and my logic is not lining up with what is happening, and now I don't know what to do, because I'm not trusting my intuition. I'm scrambling, I'm playing scrambles poorly. Someone who has played the game less than me is playing scrambles better than I am, just because they are being more decisive in making a decision where I'm steadily like trying to figure out what to do. Or it's like, I don't have an answer, so I disengage. So, mm, okay. yeah. Finding yeah, that balance is tough. I uh, I definitely had kind of like a little moment like that the other day where I, I've i realized, and I've, I've known this for a while, is like when I am on true autopilot mode, I'm 100% with punishing. Mm-hmm. Like, my brain is not in the game at all, and I'm just waiting for my opponent to do something, and I'm going to attempt to whiff punish it. But if I'm engaged, I'm playing much more i would say like aggressively like i'm being decisive but it's like some mix of the two i i guess it's like i don't know how i can like break out of that without telling myself like how do you change i don't know just like play like more games and be like okay are you autopilot right now look back at the game like stop that (laughs) Mm -hmm. i don't know like, what do you do for something like that? Because you, you just said, like, you disengage if you don't know the answer. And I feel similarly for that. Like, obviously, I'll play situations that I know. Um, but I guess uh, what do you do? <laughs> I kind of don't want to answer it. Okay. Just because it's still unique to you. Mm-hmm. And that's something for you to figure out and work through when you notice it. Because, like, again, like when you're autopiloting and when you're doing those things, like, it's coming from somewhere. And I can't know where it's coming from. So, like, my answer might not fit because it might come from a different place for me, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Teaching things kind of hard because it's like, this isn't how I used to give lessons. Yeah. But now I am trying to, like, encourage more of, like, (laughs) less of finding the answer and more, like, accepting it and trying to figure out where your thought process came from. I 
it's hard it takes a lot of work outside of the game it's really hard it's definitely a challenge um yeah i don't know i feel i definitely feel lost at times but that's good i don't know i think it's good if i know how to get unlost <laughs> if i like if i if i know how to find the path i think it's good but i feel like a lot of the times like i'm just i'm unsure like where like what the next steps are is that why your tag is unsure probably that's funny it has finally come full circle oh it's oh i mean i've known like stuff like that is just like just the uncertainty of all of it it's it's, it's great i mean it's good that's I, I like it, that's I, I like it when i can i i know that there's a path because like that's very satisfying very satisfying for me but there is a path when, I'm, I'm sure there is like i know no, i mean like your own your own path like what else is there yeah like what path are you looking for i don't know the right one <laughs> see that's the issue <laughs> yeah i think that is the issue yeah <laughs> there is no right path there is just oh, right. unsure as path and you get to make it and do what you want with it man yeah I promise Melee is more fun when you... It is fun. It's like, it legitimately is, like, I have a great time playing. Like, mm -hmm. every time I play, it's just, I think when when I add the next level of, like, improvement of, like, wanting to get to the next level, air quotes around whatever that is, uh, of, like, just, like, finding whatever that is, I think that's where it becomes much more challenging. Like, I enjoy playing. Like, every game I play, I'm... Like a smile on my face, like win or lose, I don't, you know, it's not mm. killing me, but I guess I'm looking for maybe like a deeper level of fun. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, that's, what, that's what I was saying. Like, I think it will be even more fun okay. if you uh, can kind of let go of all those expectations and what you thought the game was and all those things. Expectations are hard to beat. Yeah. Because everyone has a, a vision and an idea of what something should be. Yep. And that is impossible to unlearn. I'm Wait, not impossible. Why? Oh, yeah, I was about you to know. say, what? You no, know, no, I'm, I'm definitely being dramatic. I see. Okay, definitely. good. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I'll think about it some more. Because it feels like I'm getting closer because, like, it is becoming more frustrating. And everything that I've had, like every time that I've dealt with something really frustrating, it's always the most frustrating before it starts to click. So. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, it's, it's really fun because once you figure this part out, then like even analysis gets more fun like you get to go through things like that like the peach thing i just went through like that was fun it was just like yeah why am i why am i throwing this all away that needs to stop and it needs to be changed that that thought pattern needs to be altered um i don't know you get to just look at more parts of the game where you're just like oh i'm losing value here I can change that. Let's go through the options of what I could do here and then try and apply it. Like yesterday, um, like it feels like I'm at a point now where it's like I have a lot of little things to fix because I have not fixed, but I have gotten better at my overall view of the game, like which was a big problem to fix, I guess. And now it's like, okay, I can fix these little things. And like one was I keep like laser forward tilting Fox because like at 90% plus and it's just like yeah like in their corner it's like it kills them but so many foxes will jump over the first laser and will punish the forward tail or they'll shield the forward tail and wave that shout and shine me and I was like okay something's wrong here I'm losing way too much value here and I looked at it and I, I made like a few recordings of how it felt from Falco's or from Fox's end like I would have Falco do like approaching laser walk shine approaching laser wave dash back approaching laser backflip back air approaching laser dash dance 
and approaching laser forward tilt. Like, I still want to keep the forward tilt in there as a mix-up. But the other things, like the wave dash back, that was dealing with the full hop really well. The walk shine, walk double shine or whatever, was dealing with the whole shield really well. And it's just like, oh, man, I wasn't even using these parts of the mix-up. I kind of just kept laser forward tilting because I thought it was, like, right answer. You know? Yeah. But, I don't know, I was able to, like come up with all these new mix-ups and then test them immediately and just like it went really well I was like wow I can kind of it's cool because now I can kind of go through my game and find all these small leaks where I'm losing value and just you know change them one by one I can't do it all at the same time but like that was one that I was happy about and you know I'll find more today I'll find more tomorrow and I will keep finding them until like I quit and I'm, I'm okay with that I have accepted that because it is exciting. Yeah, I just want to get to... Like, that's what I'm... I'm looking forward to getting to that level. Mm -hmm. uh, just because it's... To me, that's fun. Like, looking and finding out those little situations. It's but very fun. I feel like I'm not at the point where I can begin to do that just because it feels like I know I'm going to exploit that and be like, haha, I found the answer, and then I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Uh, like, every time, so... I mean, dude, I still catch myself thinking in the same thought process of, like, finding answers, and I'm just like, I need to stop that. Yeah. Like, because I don't want to go back down mm -hmm. the same path. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know, that part of me is, like, a part that got me good. But it's like, I don't want it to take over. Again, I want there to be, like, a balance so, like, I definitely stop myself when I go too far down, like, the answer rabbit hole. And I'm just like, this is, I'm, I'm overthinking this. I'm also assuming that my opponent is going to do this. I'm also assuming my opponent knows this. I'm operating off of a lot of assumptions. Which, I don't think it's the best. I think there are some assumptions, like, assuming things in Melee, I think, can be good if you have like solid game plans like falco laser like a lot of i assume falco's gonna laser a lot of times if you can mm -hmm. you know because not assuming it i'm not losing much by not assuming right because you just laser. can't get to use quickly yeah enough exactly whatever. right You're right movement yeah so there, there's situations like that where like assuming is like it's pretty good assuming people will ledge that assuming people will um I don't know, recover in a certain way. Like, assumptions are great. I just had a lesson on assumptions. We talked a lot about it. But they can be good. That's all I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give that a lot of thought. I have, I think I have a lot to think out. Like, think of outside of Melee. Yeah. So... I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm very interested to see what you find. I feel like we're we're probably mentally coming from very similar spots. I mean, I don't know. I, I couldn't speak for you, of course, but I feel like at least in, in this kind of, like, hyper-analytical, like, needing the right answer type of situation, yeah. at least, I think we're coming from... A lot of people. Stuff. A lot of people do. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, if I can help in any way, like, feel free to ask me questions about it. I'm sure I will. I'm sure it'll be like three in the morning and I'm like yeah, yeah. staring at the ceiling and be like, what is going on? <laughs> yep, things will start clicking. Yeah. It's going to be pretty sick. I hope so. It'll, I mean, it'll happen. I yeah. just, uh, I, I got to just see be working to make it. I got to just make it happen. I don't think about it. I got I get a good mindset about it. Um, I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, good. Okay. Oh, surprisingly, that was an hour. Yeah. Didn't feel that long, but... No, no. Um, yeah, okay. If you have questions, definitely just hit me up. I'll be around. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right. Talk to you later. See ya.